and a very good morning to you. Malambuvi. This is K24 this morning and the entire gang is here to make sure that you are having a fantastic morning. Karibu tena sana. Shiko Kaitani, how are you doing this morning? Uh, thank you so much, Mbuvi. And Karibu sana, just like Mbuvi said, it is another beautiful, amazing session coming your way on K24 this morning. You know, if it's a Wednesday, then she's definitely the lady in red. Ah! I can see. It's, a, it's Wednesday signatures. She's making it a habit now. Even yes. last Wednesday, yeah. she wore yeah. it. Yeah, we have noted. <laughs> yes. We have noted. You've noted. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stalkers, but it's fine. You know, I like the fans. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep liking of my course, social media platforms. Let us know about that as well, of course. You can tweet us at K24 uh, TV. My name is Jeff Mota Karim Busana. Even on a Wednesday, as they say, it's ladies' night, ladies' day, however it plays out. Right here, as we start off your Wednesday proper, we make sure we jump into the dailies and look at the big stories of the day and see what that actually means to you as well as we get into the day proper. Today, we're joined by Kitutu Chache uh, MP Richard Onyonka. He's back. He came and then he left for a while. We weren't sure what was wrong, but he's back. Welcome home, Karim Busana. <laughs> I didn't go away. I just my schedule is a bit. Okay, it's a bit tight. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a good thing uh, you found time to be here with us. So thank, thank you so much. Thank uh, from the People Daily Managing Editor Ken Busira Karim Busana as well. Thank Good you. morning. Uh, very many stories to talk about. Um, front page of the People Daily, as you wake up, quite a shocker for a headline. As people are waiting for November 7th to go and cast their vote, for some people it's a game. So much so that they want to gamble, place bets on it. Raila Ruto MPs place cash, uh, place, uh, cash bets on Kibra Paul. That's a headline on the People Daily. We'll be talking about that and plenty more as we get into our news review this morning. But also, we get uh, interactive right here on the show. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, so we shall have an entire half hour of interactive, checking out all the trending stories. So if you think there's a story, we might miss out Tafadali Trambe. We always love your feedback on that. Get uh, in touch with us on all our social media platforms at K24TV. And of course, you can SMS us on 21. Triple two. Mm -hmm. And then today in our social hour, we begin by asking you the question, is sex work work? What? Today we are going to be talking to at least sex workers and understanding their challenges as far as their trade is concerned. And most importantly, should we go ahead and recognize their needs? We are going to be joined by representatives from the Kenya Sex Workers Alliance, not to mention a team from the LVCT. Wow. to talk to us this social hour. So it's definitely something you actually want to look out for. Actually, yesterday we were talking about redundancy at work. Mm -hmm. um, will you ask them about redundancy, uh, redundancy at the uh, you know, sex work? I'm actually going to <laughs> leave that part to <laughs> you, movie. Well, as you know, uh, they say it's the oldest <laughs> profession. So yeah. I, I think they've learned a way to you know, stem the title mm -hmm. when it comes to redundancy. It's not yeah. an issue they deal with pretty yeah. often. <laughs> but that and plenty more will be here from 8 till 9 in the morning. As always, we love you to chime in on our conversation right from now. Let us know where you're waking up uh, from and how your morning is so far from across the world if you're getting us from japan from birmingham mm -hmm. our one listener from north korea our one viewer from north korea as well <laughs> yes. tweet us at k24 tv sms us on 2122 let's start off with the roads let us know if you're already on the roads how that's looking we get into your traffic in the right after that we get into your new super review good morning All right, welcome back. Let's see what's happening on the roads of Nairobi. We're going to start with um, Dennis Preet, as you can see, looking very green um, the entire way um, from uh, the, well, uh, the queue launch all the way to the National Examination Center as you head down towards uh, the Kenya Comfort Suits. Everything is looking good on that particular road. And of course, Ralph Bunche Road as well. This is if you're trying to get in, uh, in touch with the State House Road, for lack of a better word. Everything is looking good on that particular center. Uh, or rather that particular road. Getting down as you're heading into the CBD, uh, let's look at what the Integrity Center is looking at right now, heading into Panafric and Kenyatta Avenue. Um, everywhere you, where you see green, that means that traffic is moving. So um, guys are not complaining as far as that is con uh, concerned. But I mean, it's a little bit early to have any complaints because it's a better, uh, what, five minutes per six o'clock. Um, things are looking fantastic. Community area where Matatus usually stop to pick uh, guys coming from all directions, coming from Gong Road, coming from uh, the Kenya National, uh, Kenya National Hospital, rather, Melimani Law Courts, and so on and so forth. Things are looking good. The library as well, as you can see there. So nothing to complain about. But as we head into the CBD, 
Um, I can tell you for sure. A little bit of uh, traffic at uh, the Nyaya House roundabout, that is GPO, General Post Office. Um, things are looking a little bit uh, snarled but that is just because cars are getting in and out of the roundabout. However, things are looking good. If you're heading towards Market Street though, uh, traffic getting into the roundabout, but well, after that, things are looking good. As you head into town as well, the roads within are looking fantastical. Jamia Mosque um, and the environs also looking green, green, green. That means lots of parking space in town. Okay, as we head um, on to another road, let's see what um, maybe a road like... Uh, Thicker Road has to offer. Now, uh, Globe Roundabout, as you're getting into Ngara, uh, into Muranga Road, so that you can get onto Thicker Superhighway. Things are looking green as well, so that means that everything is moving. Even at such a large roundabout, things are moving. Nothing to complain about so far. Um, let's see, Ngara flyover, looking good. Um, housing, uh, Ngara Estate also looking good. So that means that guys are not complaining. Let's check out another road. This is Waiyaki Way. Um, at the Hotel Boulevard uh, roundabout, also looking fantastic. The Museum Hill National, uh, National Museum Hill roundabout, rather, also looking good. You can see it's all green. So that means nothing is stopping you from getting to work, whether you're going in or out of the CBD. Uh, checking out, uh, this is Waiyaki Way. Um, around Chiromo as well. See all green. The A104 road, that is... Um, basically, Waiyaki Way looking uh, good, nothing to complain about, all green as well. And that goes all the way to Westland Stage and so on and so forth. Yeah, guys are not complaining as far as that is concerned from these images. Everything is looking good. Yeah. Um, as we get back into the CBD, let's check if we can see anything on uh, Thicker Super Highway. Uh, yeah, nothing to complain about as well. Uh, Parklands Avenue as well, nothing to complain about. We shall check the updates in the next 30. So if you see anything on the roads you think we need to know, please let us know again through our social media handles at K24TV. You can also tweet us or rather text us on 2122. We also don't mind the pictures. Anything interesting you see. Mkukoteni mekoma kwa barabara, tafadhali. Punda mesimama pia, tuonyeshe. Alice, right now, we go straight into the newspaper review. And welcome back. This, of course, is uh, the News Super Review uh, right here on K24 this morning. Looking at the big stories of the day uh, therein, uh, as always, we'd love to know the early risers. Where are you waking up from and how is it so far? Tab Injury saying we're watching. Good morning. Uh, getting ready for the News Super Review. We also have Fire Brigadier uh, Daniel Mashira, uh, Masharia rather, uh, saying that he's tuned in. Good morning. Ready for uh, the debates this morning. Can't wait to see what the team has to offer. Uh, well, there's a lot in store for you, Fire Brigadier. So hold on tight for the ride that is the News Super Review. Keep those tweets coming in at K24 TV. You can alternatively SMS us on 21222. We'll start off by looking at the front pages of uh, each of the dailies uh, this morning, then get to my panel and discuss uh, the issues therein. Start off with the People Daily's front page. Raila Ruto MPs place cash bets on Kibra Paul. High stakes game as campaigns for city by election enter the home stretch. Uh, that's what the lead story is in your copy of your People Daily this morning. Front page of the Standard How we denied Raila Prime Minister post. Matera Kireri, uh, Kibaki's closest aide, speaks on power intrigues plus why they stopped Mama Lucy from visiting ailing husband in State House. Intrigues uh, within the State House is what uh, the front page of the Standard and the story therein is all about. Front page of the Daily Nation, MCAs take home up to 25,000 uh, shillings per day. In a country choking on debt, ward reps are lining their pockets at the expense of projects to uplift the lives of Kenyans. Uh, that's the story they're talking about uh, right there on the front page of your Daily Nation this morning. In the Star, and on the Star's front page, senators go after 10 governors in graft war. Committee recommends investigation of 10 current uh, and 7 former county bosses over financial irregularities. And that's what uh, the Star is leading with this morning. And on the Business Daily's front page, Naivasha Malaba rail plan hits costs hurdle. Old railway uh, was to be rehabilitated and connected to SGR to link Mombasa and Kisumu ports, but now initial review shows the cost is just 25% lower than the new SGR line. 
So it's a financial issue right there. That might stop this or give them a new hurdle to cross before they get this implemented. And that's what the Business Daily is focusing on uh, this morning. Let's get to my panel and look at the stories that we have uh, as we get into the day proper, of course. Once again, joined by People Daily's managing editor, Ken Bosira. Good morning. Morning. And Likitu Tuchache, MP, Richard Onyonka. Morning as well. Morning, morning. Let's look at uh, the People Daily's front page. As the people of Kibra are trying to figure out who's going to fit in the humongous shoes that were left by uh, Okoth in terms of what he did, the political agenda, the development that they had, it looks like in the political class, this is a joke. When you get this from uh, the front page of uh, the People Daily, on page four of the People Daily, you get more details on this. Uh, People Daily has learned that already two MPs, they've been named right there, John Aluke, Sirisia, and Peter Kaluma Homabe have placed a bet of one million shillings each for what is being dubbed the Kibra Challenge. Honorable Onyonka, a joke? Much? Um, to me, I think sometimes some of these things um, uh, don't add any value, I think, in terms of the seriousness. And uh, Kibra is an area that needs intervention. Um, Kibra is a place where I believe the voters require services. If you've been through that neighborhood, you realize that uh, I mean, the, 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 the general area, historically and even uh, um, observations which you would make, you'll find that Kibra people need good housing, they need uh, water and sanitation services, mm -hmm. they need everything that, uh, that needs to be done well so that you can change their lives. But uh, here again... Um, this whole story is about uh, political supremacy. I don't think uh, I take the bet seriously. For mm -hmm. me, what I hope is that the people of Kibra will have an opportunity and they will think, even when money is being splashed around, even when uh, there's all this violence that is coming up, right. I hope that the people will actually just sit down and look for somebody mm -hmm. who is going to give them an opportunity to just move their lives to the next level. Right. I believe uh, Honorable Ken Okoth, he tried a lot. He looked for funding from some donors. He used government money well. And um, the record is there for people to see. Mm -hmm. And as a member of parliament, I can tell you that if the people believe in your integrity, uh, your mm -hmm. voters, and if they see you as somebody who can transform their lives, irrespective of what your opponent will spend to try and buy that mm -hmm. seat, um, they will vote for you. You've seen a bit of chaos uh, uh, with the campaign so far. Uh, yeah, a couple yeah. of cars had been stoned on, in Mariga's uh, campaign. Yes. They said that this was from the ODM camp. I don't know how they ascertained that these are ODM supporters and not anyone else. No, Shouldn't so, these MPs be speaking to these issues and not, and not uh, putting yes, Kibra challenges? Uh, I, I can tell you this. Uh, there was a time when I was running for an election and uh, my opponents actually took T-shirts of... Uh, the other party that I was against, and they got my agents to dress in my uniforms. Mm -hmm. And um, the scenario was created whereby it was going to show that I was the one who was creating the violence, and therefore... Uh, mm -hmm. But again, those are what I call sideshows. Kibra just needs people to think, to articulate issues. If you notice, all the candidates, when they are talking about Kibra, nobody quite comes through and tells you, this is what mm -hmm. I think I can do. Even though you just come with um, a five-point uh, manifesto right. and say, I'll do this on water sanitation, I'll make sure security is okay, education will be worked on, I, may, I want to make sure that bursaries will be available, I intend to make sure that all your schools in Kibra will continue the way Honorable Ken left them, and, um, and maybe something else. So, and I'll deal with women issues, the youth issues, that right. kind of thing. But we always love to deal with uh, sideshows when right. we come to Kenyan elections. And this is one huge uh, sideshow, Mr. Bosire. We're talking about a person who, uh, Honorable Kaluma, that is, at one point has uh, spoken out on, uh, and it's on public record that MPs aren't paid enough. Um, and he broke down, in fact, his personal costs. When you see that he's willing to put one million shillings on the line, it seems that I think he's doing pretty well. Uh, in fact, more than enough to place a wager of one million shillings. F for me, Kibra... It is what these guys are engaging in is what I would call drama, something of tra a tragic comedy. The, the Kibra, like Mwishmiu has just said, 
just needs the leader. And uh, the issue, Skibra for me, is a tragedy in the, in the city of, it shows the contrast of our society, it's the reflection of our society. And when we go back to, when we see people beginning to look at it like a game, it is very, very distressing, very, very distressing. And uh, Kibra had, the Kibra residents are, are, are a bit unfortunate because they already had a leader who was beginning to change things, beginning to see what it means to, what leadership really entails. But now they seem to, that unfortunate tragedy that took away their MP has let all, in all these other guys, mm -hmm. the jokers, the real jokers in, in our leadership come in. And what you see in Kibra is for me what ails this country in terms of leadership. We engage more in sideshows, drive people's emotions up, adrenaline and everything else, and fail to articulate that very particular issue about transformation. What is it that you want to do? I do not think that people are even playing games in Kibra, the Kibra themselves. The people think it's a, an arena for them to jump around and then right. finally... Mwishimi Kaluma comes all the way from Homa Bay. Bay. And Waluke comes all the way from the extreme corner. In fact, if he just runs faster, he can find himself in Uganda. <laughs> so all these guys, I think like we say, Kibra just needs to come back. To the, the Kibra guys need know what they need. Kenno call set the standards, and they just need to use that template. Right. What do we need in our next MP? All these other guys go. And the moment we begin to reduce this thing, and unfortunately we're beginning... And I, in this side, we, as the media as well, we, we've taken that thing, we've primed this thing as a Raila, Ruto kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So these other guys who are playing in are just supporting cast, right. which, which is unfortunate. But having said that, I think something else that seems to be escaping our mind in Kibra is IBC. Though belatedly last night, tried to release a statement, a very, very, very vague statement that they have summoned guys over the utterances, but Ki Kibra, there are people who are trying to set up Kibra as a combustible kind of thing, mm -hmm. talking about fires, all the bad language that we want to forget. We thought had been smothered out by the handshake, but we're beginning to see very, very incendiary uh, kind mm -hmm. of pronouncements. Right. And KBC, IBC, sorry, not KBC, mm -hmm. IBC, he's sleeping on the job. What they did yesterday is something they are not being a critical referee. I think it's, they've closed up their minds and are not listening. A lot needs to be controlled in Kibera. Right. And IBC, I don't know what those summons mean, but they should have been there to put everybody to account. Right. We've heard of money changing hands, right? people inciting each other uh, to fight to be heard. And there's the worst really that, that comes along, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ethnic profiling from mm -hmm. the word go. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether there is another commission called uh, the Integration Commission. All those guys were supposed to keep us together, their cohesion. Right. I think, for me, Mwishmiya, when you're in parliament, one of the things that needs to happen, maybe looking at these independent commissions, are they serving Kenyans? Mm -hmm. hmm? Because Kibra was a test case for all of them to come in, the human rights and all those other mm -hmm. things to come in, but they have failed. But most, I think worryingly for me, the referee is asleep. Right. And even as you say that, of course, um, one thing we have to underscore every single time is that with all the sideshows that continue to play out, uh, as Honorable Onyonga has also put it, and you've put it as well, on November 7th, it's the people of Kibra who decide on how this will play out. They've already seen what uh, a hardworking member of parliament can do for their constituency, and they want that continued on that particular front. So away from the sideshows, November 7th, the people of Kibra do decide on that particular issue. I'll, allow us, uh, I'll, I'll ask you to please move on to page two of uh, People Daily. State corporations throw out interns deployed by uh, the PSC. At least 3,600 graduate trainees stranded as government bodies clash over selection criteria. Uh, now, in this particular story, uh, it has been established that uh, the affected interns are victims of a standoff between the Public Service Commission, uh, parastatals, and other state agencies that has impended their absorption as institutions seek to control the recruitment process. What's the problem in this particular scenario, Honorable Bonyonka? Because you see there's a lot of breakdown in communication. Because by the mm -hmm. time we have a function, we have all the ministries uh, there, we have the cabinet secretary is there, this is a government project that is now rolling out. Yes. Then state agencies come and talk about the fact that they're not aware of how this is uh, working, how they mm -hmm. were selected. Mm -hmm. This should have been sorted out before. 
we went to Kasarani. That is true, but again, uh, I would like to mention that in Kenya, a very interesting development always takes place. When you see different interstate agencies screaming at each other, I always go for the money. Mm -hmm. I, I don't look at the, the outstanding issues which right. they kind of try and, mm -hmm. and camouflage. The truth is, this is a, an incredibly good idea where you take young individuals who have graduated from school, from colleges, and now they, they're at home, and therefore you are going to accommodate them mm -hmm. where they're going to be sorted out to go to different departments you know, on attachment. Right. They will be learning on the job. Some of them will be training themselves as they await the next move, which is either into employment or into further training. Right. Now, the scenario you have is, second point, if... If, if any manager doesn't come out with the transparency and accountability, that is what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Public Service Commission, uh, as the implementing authority, should have come out and given even maybe two, three points of saying, we are going to recruit these individuals either per constituency mm -hmm. or per county so that there is accountability and transparency so that when Kenyans look at this exercise, they can be satisfied. Even those who are going to be in a position where they are not accommodated can say, okay, I really tried my best, but I can see this thing was given out on merit. I believe that um, the, 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 you have, for you to have had this, ex this exercise conducted uh, satisfactorily, you should have come up and said, we will use uh, order of merit. If, right. if, you're, if you're going to be a, attached as a, a teacher trainee, we'll look at your grades. Right. How had you performed? We'll take uh, individuals who have uh, B minus or B pluses, whatever it is. Right. There had to be a criteria. Then you would come out and say, we also want to explain to you the truth is, uh, which I'm sure you know is, is, uh, is something that the government has talked about, which is there will be some stipend. Right money which will be paid to these individuals, and then you have to explain this money will be paid on a monthly basis, and how we intend these individuals to be paid is so and so, or such and such. The problem is the whole exercise is being conducted in secrecy. I'm a member of parliament, but I can tell you today, I know nothing about this. And then the, the question is, right. then how, how is this uh, rolled forward from the executive exactly. without parliament? Go ahead. It, the, it, we were not informed on this. They brought it in, and I sit in the budget committee. They asked for resources, which we gave them, and we expected them to now come up with the modalities of rolling out the exercise, because that is commonsensically what you expect them to do. But last month, I met somebody who works in that office, and uh, the individual told me, by the way, the exercise is already complete. You may have to wait for the one of next year. And I sit in the budget committee, and I'm a member of parliament, and I've got my voters who are waiting for me to give them a, re a report as to what has happened in terms of how many individuals and students from my constituency have been posted in, under this exercise. And so the question begs, Honorable Onyonka, in yeah. such a scenario where... Yes. The, the government is rolling out the project. Yes. Parliament hasn't given uh, the go-ahead on this. Departments are, already, are fighting about the control of the exercise. Yes, number one of the individuals. But for me more so, I would trace the money. Right. The issues, anytime you see government departments screaming at each other, even anytime you see members of parliament screaming at each other in parliament about some project or whatever, those are money issues being fought over. Right. Yes. Is there a way parliament can actually halt this process now? Or yes, they, there's, a, there's a likelihood we could, but you know the, the, the system we have now, uh, and, um, the, 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 you know in parliament where, for example, such a matter previously, we would actually summon the minister for labor and... Uh, and youth affairs, she would have come there in the old system and we would be interviewing and cross-examining her on the floor of the house. Now, you file this and take it to the floor of the house. Believe you me, chances are you'll be told the minister is not available. We cannot discuss this matter. It's going to take about, um, is it 30 days? By then, everything would have been taken by events, overtaken by events. So it, it is a, it's a whole mess up, but I believe that there are my colleagues in the house and some of us will have to follow up on this matter so mm -hmm. that, you know, such a good idea. This is how National Youth Service Program failed. Right. Such an incredibly successful program. 
But what was everybody else looking? It's not the public service. It's not the fact that we were dealing with the youth. It's not that we were giving youth opportunities. What we were actually, some, what some individuals who were given the responsibility of handling the National Youth Service Program, the agenda was to siphon off and steal the money. Mr. Busire, uh, one of the parasitical heads has also spoken about the fact that, okay, fine, as Onyonka said, it is good in principle, but you've seen how this intern uh, story has played out before. Case in point, the KRA, they bring all these people in, and we yes. don't know if they're interns or this is intelligence. And they're just wary. They're like, no, first of all, let us know who these people are. We'll do our own vetting before they come in. A typical script of all brilliant ideas of uh, the government. And you begin to wonder, Mishmir, that you, they, they did all the allocations. Yeah. Somebody was keen to have a clear-cut system of once the pass is opened, we can do what we want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A typical story of every Kenyan project. And, but I think, for me, the clarity of this project was not laid out. The Public Service Commission, like all other best practices, is to have done, run out a template of what they want to do, the criteria set, the benchmarks. Yeah. But they, this, this didn't happen. Right. And I do not expect where Kobe just decided, how did they pick those people? Right. Yeah. And where were they going to go to? Mm -hmm. And what were the available spaces announced exactly. in all departments? So, like we said, it's one of those things that you tend to think that it was another money meeting Making project. Mm -hmm. And I can bet the next Auditor General report will be talking about how this money was taken into people's hands. Right. And the DCI will be running, and DPP will mm -hmm. be running after mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. A case will be filed in court. A guy is completely comfortable and cushioned with the money they've taken from this thing. In Have fact, in fact one, one other issue that shocked me, the same day when I went to the Public Service Commission, I found uh, a lady who had come there to, to launch a complaint saying that what is happening now is that in government departments, there are cases where people are sent for attachment, mm -hmm. they come and they become your understudies, you are the manager or, right. the, or you are a deputy in that department. You will see two, three guys who are, or two, three individuals are brought and they are given that responsibility and you are the one who is supposed to train them. And in a period of close to two months, you find that you are transferred. Right. As you are removed from your department, then next, guess what happens? The person who was brought in as an, attach, an attachment candidate right. takes, takes over and starts position. acting. Mm -hmm. Then they take you to a department and in an area where, in fact, your responsibilities are emasculated. They shift you from completely from even the geographical area. Some people are being transferred. Those who are in Mombasa are being transferred to some place in Yauru, Yauru, Others mm -hmm. are being... So somebody goes into an office. That guy, in a short period of time, it's a story I was being told, is confirmed. So you have certain Kenyans who are actually being booted out of their jobs deliberately because somebody must have posted a relative right. to go and take over a certain job as an, att an attachment student or somebody who's just getting into job entries so that they can get that position. And somebody who doesn't have any backup and support is kicked out. Astounding facts on this particular issue right there. And you'd like your say on this as well, even as we get into our first break of the day, because we're talking about an issue that, of course, everyone says, in principle, fantastic idea, but what really happened in terms of the implementation? Lots of secrecy in this, very shrouded in how did you get the interns, how are we paying them, what's happening, and it almost seems like the train has left the station. How do you bring it back? How do you get the parliament to play in the check system? It should, in terms of balancing the executive's powers. That's what we talk about as well, and you'd like to hear your say on this uh, as well. Tweet us at K24 TV. You can also SMS us on 2122. We'll take a break. We'll be back with plenty more. Probably after the break, we'll be joined by Daragua MP Honorable Jeremiah Kioni. Uh, that and much more. Of course, this is KTT for this morning.